So Valentine's Day is nearly upon us. What I wanted to do in this video and possibly in a few more videos to come is to look at Valentine's Day from a slightly different perspective. A Valentine's Day where the love on the pedestal is not about finding somebody else or being seen or chosen, but the love that's highest on the pedestal is self-love and seeing yourself and choosing yourself. Because I know from bitter experience that Valentine's Day can be a huge trigger point for people who have been really injured in love, who have felt the sting of bitter betrayal, and for people who are finding and navigating a way through heartbreak, whether that be recent heartbreak or a lingering heartbreak that you are having to rebuild from. And I think we've all experienced heartbreak at some point in our lives, whether it be in a form where it takes us a week of crying and listening to sad songs and we're through and out and partying again, or whether it's a devastating betrayal that brings you to your knees and shatters you into a million pieces and that takes years to heal from. We've all at some point experienced somewhere along the spectrum. I wanted to do a video today about navigating heartbreak, finding a way through and out to see yourself and to choose yourself and to claim your own importance back. This is a video about my journey through heartbreak back to myself and the depth that I found incredibly useful on the way. I hope it's a Valentine's gift, especially to anybody in heartbreak. Just how can we use our decks and what sort of ways have I used my decks to do exactly that? So first of all, I want to talk about affirmation decks. So this is the personal power oracle deck. You are powerful, provided you know how powerful you are. And I think recovering from betrayals or heartache, it is a journey back into your own personal power. So any deck like this one, that can help you to access that personal power again is just so vital. Um, there's lots of I am statements on here. I love this card with a disability on. I am unbreakable. I surrender. I am supported. I am sacred. I reveal my truth. So I think for me, going through heartache i had to be in the right mood for these decks so kind of like i am supported when i feel really unsupported could be a bit of a trigger some days so you've got to be in the right frame of mind but even pulling that sort of message on a day where you don't feel supported it's a prompt isn't it to find avenues into where could i get support how can I support myself? What do I need today? And that's where the power comes. It's not shying away from the fact that actually I don't feel supported here, but it's the power to ask the question, well, why? Why don't I feel supported? Where can I create that support? Stepping into your own power to find your own way out. I think we feel so helpless after huge betrayals that and heartbreaks that we kind of... I have to remind ourselves that we're not waiting for somebody else to come in and save us. We're, we're our own hero. So affirmation decks after heartbreak. I think the triggers that these decks can sometimes make can be useful as well. Another way that I found myself changing and using decks as I worked my way through heartbreak was I began to embrace who I was more fully. My focus was less on looking for validation or love outside of myself. It became more internal. The focus returned to me to geek out on the things that I loved. I gave myself permission, permission to be exactly who you are. If that isn't choosing yourself, I don't know what is. So it, this is going to be different for everybody. For me, geeking out on art and art passions 
I'd kind of forgotten in the toxic relationship that I was an artist, reduced my art down to nothing by disallowing space for the art to happen. In the end, when anybody mentioned, oh, do you do art? He would reply, no, she just sticks stuff onto stuff. My entire life's training and passion and work had been reduced down to that single phrase and I had no fight left in me. So for me, a big part of healing was to allow myself to geek out on my passions again, to actually embrace the title of artist again. Geeking out on artists I love, namely and mostly Frida. So this tarot avatar was a big part in my healing recovery, just reconnecting with Frida again, falling into this guidebook that has imagined diary entries by Frida. It literally felt like I w was chatting to her with every card pull. Also, I am a massive book nerd and within terrible relationships I couldn't I couldn't read I was left so exhausted I didn't read for eight years decks like the hobby I bought this for my daughter and then I bought a second copy for me it just allows my inner geek to squeal with delight really and it's permission it's the power of giving yourself permission and it's funny really because when um the smoke and mirrors of of my relationship fell apart and i could see truth for what it really was to try and re-blind me he took me to see the hobbit at the movies having never bothered to spend any time with me for 12 years he was suddenly, no, you like you like reading, don't you? Let's go and see the Hobbit movie. And I can remember sitting in that movie at the cinema thinking, why am I here? What am I doing? And that date out to watch the Hobbit movie was the last time we ever went out together. So it just goes to show that there is power in something that you geek out on your passion it was used against me by disallowing it and then it was used to try and pull me back in there's power here guys we know it they know it and i think to never let go of passions and to allow yourself to geek out so these decks are brilliant for me for going do you know what i am a complete geek when it comes to words i'm a complete geek when it comes to story I'm a complete geek when it comes to fantasy novels. I'm a complete geek when it comes to art and I'm going to embrace it and love it. And if nobody else understands it, that's fine. There is real power in that. So these decks were really useful to claim that back and to hold on to it really. Um, I was going to say tightly, but we don't need to hold on to anything tightly when we're healed. We can just embrace everything with warm hugs, knowing it's not going anywhere again, because we've got this. Part of navigating my way out and through was to learn how to slow down, to learn how to implement a pause. A lot of my tarot practice has really supported me in that slowing down aspect of healing. The decks that really supported me in this and and tarot can do this an oracle decks can help you with this i found is this one the weaver's oracle so the weaver's oracle i went through a year where i pulled this on full moons just a card a month oh my gosh she's on top she was the very first card I ever pulled this is a deck where you need to spend time with it so a tarot practice I mean it doesn't need to be this deck I don't even know whether this deck is in print anymore it's an indie deck it was actually my first ever indie deck that I bought myself which again felt like claiming back of power because I'd never spent any proper money on myself. But any, you can do this with any deck, but just say, pick one card and say, I that, I'm gonna sit with that and meditate with that and the story of it in the imagery for say a month or even say a week and to just journal about where it takes you. 
this deck is brilliant because of the guidebook entries around the weavers and then all of that information you can explore that story and there's lots of imagery that can come up in meditation from the story you've also got all the patterns in the weaving that might create a path working story in your head for meditation um, so there's loads going on in these cards a brilliant for sitting with for a long time this isn't a deck that you could say pull a six card spread from it's just not one of those decks it's a deck that is purely designed to slow you down and to enter the world of the weaver and find the lessons there i found it again in the hallow quest the arthurian tarot which is mass market it's just been re-released with like pinky purple back that Hello Quest provides an entire year laid out for you to do this practice. It's a fantastic tool to learn to pathwork and meditate into the cards. It literally sets out the meditations for you. You literally just have to sit quietly, breathe, stop spinning and enter the card. The archway around the image is like is there to be a doorway to step into. This deck I think transformed my practice and brought my healing on no end. Oh my gosh. And I have cried so many tears over this deck with some of the profound healing moments. And I've only done about a third of the Hallow Quest. It was so profound. I had to keep stopping meditation path working with tarot decks some decks are way more useful for that than others the hallow quest and the arthurian tarot is one the weavers is another but these decks really helped me so if you're coming through any sort of heartache at whatever level it doesn't need to be as extreme as another person's if you find yourself spinning this practice is just so so useful and it's not denying feelings it's not hiding from feelings it's not numbing feelings it's stopping sitting in them exploring them which is the way to move through and out it's the only way to move through and out okay there is no doubt about it that when you are in heartbreak of any sort there is a disconnect between you and your heart and the rest of the world there is pain involved and it does disconnect you for me as well with family scapegoating there was a disconnect at a really vital important part of the family line as well so that feeling of being disconnected of the balloon being let go of floating away not feeling grounded i also dissociated a lot through trauma so i really had a big battle to recover from heartbreak and that feeling of being disconnected and i think decks can really help to connect you in certain ways i wanted to share the decks that i use to increase my connection for me there were different areas of connection that i needed to to find so my deity came in screaming at me to be strong when i when i was in the depths of heartache and disbelief find a deck that can help you connect with any deity you're working with for me it was the morrigan is just really powerful to feel like you've got a tool to help you connect and get advice and find next steps with the voice of a god or goddess or deity is, is you know as profound as it sounds you know to converse with deity in times of trouble again that time spent at the altar just inviting deity in by name lighting a candle lighting a stick of incense something to trigger you into that quiet breathing space to stop the spinning that we talked about with the other decks but then to have this sort of tool at hand sometimes the cards stayed out for months on end and i knew that there was still 
questions to be answered from that card or work to be done because it's okay to know what you've got to do but actually doing the action to heal when you're in heartbreak is is tough so to keep coming back to the altar to gain strength and to know that there's that advice there within the card with the prompt to come on let's have another go at this this card needs to stay out for a bit longer is is just wonderful it feels like a, it felt like a safety net for me my altar and being able to converse with deity and then working with ancestors now i really struggled at first to think about working with ancestors when i don't feel safe in my family line when my family line is the problem the family line holds trauma and abuse and I had some amazing advice off a friend who said, find the safe people in the family line. So I thought about my gorgeous dad. Here's my dad actually in the army in India. My dad was a safe person. My dad's brothers all passed now with their wives. My uncle Regis is my dad's oldest brother and his brother, my uncle Stan, and their wives. My grandma here, she was the most gentlest spirit ever. And my favorite auntie here, all of these people have since passed. This is my dad's mom, my gorgeous nanny. She was just so kind and so beautiful. These are my safe people in my family line. Also, my dogs, my dogs have passed. This is Rebel, our cross Alsatian Labrador. This is who I think Rupert is. I see so many mannerisms that Rupert's got that are just so like Rebel. And my gorgeous Penny, my rough collie Penny, she was my 10th birthday present, having nagged for years for a dog. And Pippa, this is Luna. This is Luna reincarnated. And then there's Kerry, the little Australian terrier, who was, who was the boss of them all, the tiniest little dog. And of course, my beautiful Irish terrier, Maisie. The first dog I bought as a adult living in my own home. A dog that I loved with every fibre of my body. These are really safe spaces for me. So when my dad's voice started to come through this ride awake deck and repeating cards kept appearing to tell me that he was there it was him at first my instinct was to to think oh well, gosh you're making that up that's not right and eventually i realized i could either ignore those whispers and that voice and the synchronicities of the cards and the coincidences and the amazing revelations that the the readings were giving me every time the whisper went go and get my deck i need to talk to you i could ignore all of that or i could just accept it and use it to heal and that's what i've done and i suppose i am saying for now that this is a mediumship deck so i only ever use it when i hear my dad's voice asking me to go and get it or when i really desperately need to hear him or get some clarification from him it's a way of me working with the family line it clarified to me that i am the circle breaker in the line as well and to be a circle breaker you have to stand in the river of your family ancestry with the water from behind and the water flowing forward you're in the river i always visualize it as a river you can stand in the river and do the work and stand firm in that placeholder of circle breaker i think you can heal the river both ways the healing flows backwards it flows forward so your ancestors and working with the ancestral line becomes inevitable because you're affecting the river does this make sense so knowing that and claiming the power of that position and getting into the river these decks were really really important it put purpose into my healing that was beyond me it was for the family to come it was for the family in the past it was for all of us chiro machetti's tarot grand Lux, which was gifted to me by a friend and i was just one day absent-mindedly pulling cards and a very strong voice came through of my maternal grandmother who was 
fierce <laughs> she was very fierce let's just leave it at that completely different character to my dad's mom and she had messages about the trauma that I was stuck in and messages about my own mother and it was just so loud and so clear and the cards were just so gobsmacking that I I couldn't get over it and this deck now is kept for when I hear that voice coming through so that is another way that tarot helped me to heal it helped me to claim my purpose as a circle breaker and to reground myself from working with the ancestral line so as you're following your passions and you're on the right path you're following what excites you i think you might stumble like i did into the barrier of permission knowing that it's okay to give yourself permission to do things so the permission you give yourself to be authentically you i mean i see it in my doll room now to be brave enough to use my dolls for doll divination online um, and i've come a long way because when i first joined tarot tube even like three years ago loads of people were saying oh, i don't like collage decks i really dislike collage decks a lot of people still say today i hear them say i like collage decks but not the uncommon tarot so when i first joined tarot tube three years ago i convinced myself that i didn't like collage decks either and i think it's just because i'd heard so many people say it i was still not being authentically me and at some point after about a year and a half i got my muse tarot out which i'd bought because of the colors because i love it and it made me squeal but i'd bought it and put it away and thought why have i bought this it's a collage deck i don't like collage decks and after about a year and a half i got it back out and thought what was i thinking of i love collage of course i love collage decks and that was me healing i'd stepped into my own power and i'm showing you the uncommon tarot because even now even though collage decks are having a resurgence i hear i've heard a few people say like collage decks but not the uncommon tarot and loads of people agree saying oh yeah no we don't like that one either which is completely fine everybody is completely entitled to love or dislike whatever they want and to be in their own power but i love it and i haven't hidden this one away i love it look at the colors it's fabulous uh, it's collage it's kind of got this sort of muted vibe to it i love it and um to say do you know what i don't care i, lo I love this and it's my my opinion here that matters and if you don't like it that's fine but i love it that is me being authentically me and tarot decks have taught me to do that and um i'm going to share another one that i literally not only did i not hide it away and decide oh, okay perhaps i don't like it. i even went on to three girls one deck and tried to convince publicly on a live why they should love this deck too <laughs> the the difference in attitude there and that ability to claim what i authentically love which is this deck oh my gosh the the ability to go on that live and do that is something that i couldn't have comprehended even three years previously because i'd been told all my life what i was allowed to like and what i was not allowed to like and i was ridiculed for things that i did like my dolls got put away I wasn't allowed any money to to buy things to test the waters um i was reduced to an exhausted shell of myself so to come back and not only get a chance to buy these things but then to claim to the world i love it even in the face of you not loving it was huge it's huge it's healing so i'm saying embrace what you love don't be led by the crowd if you love it love it if you don't love it don't love it your opinion is as important as anybody else's 
and just because somebody disagrees with you it doesn't make you wrong it doesn't it doesn't make them automatically right i think to have confidence in your opinion and to not immediately say oh i must have got this wrong then is massive when you're coming out of heartbreak so be authentically you it's fun through every healing journey there is a moment where you just think i cannot put one foot in front of another i just can't healing is is intense it's a tough old journey and i think we all have experienced that feeling where you just can't i think decks can also really help you with that call to action for the just the next thing the next right step action a quarter action decks when you just can't there are decks out there that supported me in those moments one of them is the language of letting go by melody bt now melody bt wrote has written all of the books i read on codependency codependency and learning that codependency existed was massive for me and i hadn't ever heard of codependency or melody bt and reading her books was a revelation so when i realized that she has a deck as well oh my gosh and on the back there are today i will messages for when you simply don't know what the next step is getting calm today i will stop searching for happiness outside of myself just a brilliant deck when you don't know the next step and i have used it literally on those days where i have needed the next step today i will acknowledge that my knowledge feelings and beliefs are all mine and they're just as valid as anybody else's isn't that just what we just talked about so there are decks like this that will help you when you just don't know what the next step is the melody beauty deck is mass market as was this i think i only paid about three pounds for this so anxiety for me was a massive part of recovering from from trauma and heartbreak i had to learn that it had left me with really increased levels of stress and anxiety but i think acknowledging the fact that there were really good reasons for that and not to beat myself up for my levels of anxiety you know when you've you've walked through hell it's understandable that you think that the road's going to be too hot for your faith because you've just walked through hell so i think sex like this as well just gave me next step steps you know affirmations finger holds of hope you know understanding that this time will pass just to sit and breathe it's hard to accept things as they are but if i could do that it would set me free this is the way things are now so staying in the moment remind us to breathe if i were to lose everything i have what would i miss i will make time for the things that matter and give less time to the things i wouldn't even miss so whatever level of heartbreak you've just got. simply missing somebody can lead you into not knowing what the next step is and some of these decks are really good for just saying hey why don't you just try this just today within my healing i found that confusion became a really interesting marker for me i knew always to sit up and take note when i felt confused about things so confusion for me took on different areas of relevance for me in walking out of heartbreak there was the confusion of what the hell had i just experienced and who the hell are these people who i thought were one thing and they're obviously something else and why the hell is there now a gaslighting smear campaign against me there was that confusion about trying to understand the unimaginable but there was also confusion after so many years of being in what i'd had that i couldn't understand or identify or name my own emotions so confusion became like a massive 
signpost in the ground for work here to here. Whatever there was confusion, I knew that there was a signpost in the ground there for here is where there is something to heal, almost like a shadow work signpost. Come here to do shadow work. So the, I think the first thing was I needed to start understanding myself more, my own emotions. And um, not getting to the decks yet, I did it through, I mean, I went to do a 100 day project called 100 Days of Feel the Feels. The first thing I did was I printed out endless emotion wheels and grids like this with like emotion work. My word of the year at the time was fail and I found this sketchbook which was the start of my 100 day project hence it's got the emotion words glued in the front and uh, I, I, th I thought I just need to Except that I'm going to keep failing this because I don't know what I'm feeling. So I picked my word of the year as fail. I thought I'm just going to collect fails and not be scared to fail at trying to work this out. And you can see from this picture at the time I was accessing meditative states by drawing repeated lines. And I still have boxes of A4 paper just filled with repeating lines. I started drawing repeating lines in my bedroom when I was still living in horrendous conditions with my ex and I would sit and draw lines to try and dissociate. So I was still in the process of drawing lines and you can see I started, oh my gosh, this is so old now. You can see repeating lines here. Very quickly, the lines began to be mandalas and I started thinking about the journey I was on, the journey to healing. I was writing down daily triggers for when I was feeling an, a strong emotion and then journaling, look, you can see it's hidden under here, journaling about what actually was that emotion, what was I feeling then, I was so dissociated after years of being in heartbreak and hurt and being treated badly, I just didn't know what I was feeling anymore. So these mandala drawings, then the words the words became arbitrary. The The thought process as I was drawing the mandalas would work it out in my head. I didn't need to write it down. It went on in my head as I was drawing. It was almost like drawing the mandala put me in a meditative state so that I could figure it out and become more emotional, emotionally literate. And that becoming emotionally literate was my first step in healing the heartbreak I'd gone through, being able to state and name my emotions. I think a big indicator of this is if, like me, you can only name like, oh, I'm sad or I'm happy or I'm angry. If that then is the limit of what you can identify, then you're, the emotional literacy isn't there and I very quickly discovered that the emotional literacy wasn't there for me so I did a hundred days of this and I found that sort of work also available in decks like this this is the reclaim oracle if you can name and identify your emotions you can identify when you're not being treated correctly I was always told I wasn't allowed emotions other people were, I wasn't. But when you consider that your emotions are messengers saying, hey, something's not right here. I mean, if you feel angry or resentful, that messenger in within that emotion is, hey, something's not right. You're not being treated how you expect to be treated. So if you can't even identify how you're feeling, I don't think you can build boundaries. That was my order of healing. I had to become emotionally literate to be able to identify and name a wide range of emotions. That then allowed me to understand core wounds. And from that, I built my boundaries. That was the process of healing for this me. This deck will, will act as an emotion wheel for me still. It's really, really useful. But I think any deck that you can identify specific emotions can help can really help you to become more emotionally literate the other aspect of confusion that was really Im important for me was like the unimaginable behavior of others especially when you've been gaslit or lied about 
I've shared this combination before. So this is the zombie tarot with the Chicoli tarot. Now this stays out. This pairing has been fundamental for me in recovering from family scapegoating and asking what is was shown to the world, what was really going on beneath the surface, what they're telling people, but what's really happening the image that people portray with what's really underneath the surface or well, i'm confused about when this happened what was really going on under the surface this has been a brilliant combination for that and at times where i literally couldn't stand one more thing happening and was in shock and bowled over by cruelty in heartbreak this was a clarifier for me this was a what well, hang on a minute take a deep breath this is what's really going on and you know that and this was your part but this is their part it was a call to take off any rose tinted spectacles and to get rid of the confusion that rose tinted spectacles or the desires of a really loving heart you know you want to love your family you want to be embraced by your family to take off the rose tinted spectacles and to admit to yourself that that isn't going to happen that isn't who these people are it was really tough and took a long time to get over heartbreak isn't just romantic relationships i think some of the biggest heartbreak for me was done by the cruelty of family members and these decks clarified situations where I just couldn't get over my confusion or my disbelief in what was really going on surely they're not these people surely it must be me somewhere this deck helped clarify those I can't believe this moments so confusion in all its aspects was a massive thing for me to overcome and to work with in the healing process and these are the decks and the ways in which I use them to do that. So finally in heartbreak there is a moment where you have to get off the couch, turn the sad songs off, go and have a shower, wash your face, get back up and re-enter the world and for some that takes longer than others. Eventually there's that point where you go out and I think the word quest for me was a way to get me out the door I wasn't going back into the mundane around people that might hurt me initially it was like no you're just going out on a quest and decks to accompany you are like holding somebody's hand for me so the stretch tarot it's just so witchy and so full of mystery and the potential for an adventure on a sacred site or in a forgotten story like this is the deck I took to Margaret's house it's a deck that you can imagine walking into a haunted house with and pulling a reading it's a deck that just calls you into seeking a mystery to solve those are good reasons to get back out into the to the world again to spark up your curiosity i think claiming our power back is one thing but also claiming our curiosity back after heartbreak is just so fabulous because when you get curious curiosity is a huge pull it's a huge reason to get up and out and it's hard to ignore curiosity they say curiosity killed the cat that's for a reason it's hard to ignore when you get curious about something so to get curious about something and to use a deck to hold your hand into the adventure of that curiosity is fantastic so the stretch tarot helps me and continues to help me in this part of the healing process and also my travel box my travel altar of course this is the box that I grab when I'm going out and I think I might need a tarot deck or when I'm going to visit the Sheilas this is the dark goddess 
tarot oh my goodness me it's just oh you know, it's just so so good and some of these cards have had some really profound wonderful readings with incredible messages this is a deck that screams feminine power and screams to us all get off the couch and go and have an adventure i love it um, so this has been probably the latest stage of my healing getting out and back into curiosity and it's just been the most impactful wonderful stage with decks in hand to support that so the decks that i use to navigate through heartbreak and to claim back hope and power and curiosity the decks that helped me take the next step when i just couldn't the decks that helped me to feel connected again the decks that helped me to embrace who i truly am so that i can attract those meant for me moving forward the decks that supported me through and out guys i hope you found that interesting so thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed that and i will see you next time bye